Now, after releasing the first generation Samsung Galaxy Fold last year, Samsung has listened to us on improving all of the issues that users faced when they introduced the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. So yes, in this video, I'll be going through everything that you need to know about this device and I'll answer all of your questions that you've asked me in my first impressions video and I'll also tell you how my experience was using this phone daily for the past two weeks. So keep watching. Now, since this is a review unit, it did not come with the retail box, but just so you all know, other than the user manual and the other documentation, the box also comes with the SIM ejector tool, a USB-C to USB-C cable, the AKG USB-C earphones, and the 25 watt fast charger. Now going over to the phone specs, it comes with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus chipset. It also comes with Adreno 650 GPU with just a single variant here in Malaysia, which is a huge 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage, which uses UFS 3.1 storage. It comes shipped with Android 10 with Samsung's latest Android skin, which is the One UI version 2.5. So that's your answer on the chipset, Harit Iskandar. Now looking at the color options, it comes with two colors for you guys to choose from. The one which I have with me is called the Mystic Black and it also comes in Mystic Bronze which is the similar finish to the Note 20 Ultra 5G. As for your question, Y Kingdom, the two color options are not available here in Malaysia. Now looking at the phone's build quality and design, the outside of the phone has an all glass back at the front and also at the back where the sides are made of aluminium, which overall makes the phone quite solid. Then the triple rear cameras are arranged in a vertical position, just like how the Note 20 looks. Then the front of the phone, which is called the cover display, has a single camera over there. Now, since its first release, Samsung has done a huge improvement on its hinge mechanism. So here's what's new. So the folding and the unfolding experience was really solid. Feels very sturdy where the flex mode hinge uses the CAM or computer-aided technology that allows you to position either part of the foldable main screen. That allows you to position the device from 75 all the way to 180 degrees flat and it stops at a very sturdy position no matter where you place the phone. And when it's folded halfway like this, you can kind of use it like a mini laptop where the keyboard layout will be on both sides of the screen similar to how the first generation fold was. Then within the hinge itself, there is a technology which Samsung calls the sweeper tech to kind of get rid of dust and dirt whenever it's open and closed. And that was surely a huge improvement compared to the first generation Samsung Galaxy Fold. Now looking at the ports and buttons, on the bottom of the phone, you'll find a USB Type-C port towards the right side of the fold and one of the two stereo speakers towards the left side of the fold. Then on the right, there is the volume rocker, a power button with an integrated fingerprint sensor, which to me, I find it great as it is placed over there as I find it very easy to unlock the phone. On the left, there is a SIM ejector slot and finally on top, there's another stereo speaker. As for the phone screen on the front cover display, we are greeted with a 6.23 inch display compared to the 4.6 inch on the previous fold. And the cover display has a Super AMOLED screen with a resolution of 816 by 2260 pixels with a 25 by 9 aspect ratio pixels which made the display way more usable from a day-to-day -day basis. Now opening up the phone, we again have a bigger 7.6 inch 1768 by 2208 pixel resolution which uses not one but two Samsung's dynamic AMOLED display with a high refresh rate of 120 Hz through its adaptive refresh rate feature. And another huge improvement is of course the Infinity O display on the camera instead of the camera cutout which was available in the first generation fold. And because of this, watching videos on portrait mode was already great since the size of the screen itself is pretty huge and it looked even amazing full screen where it had this great widescreen experience when watching videos on YouTube and Netflix as well. And yes, due to its dynamic flex AMOLED display technology, viewing videos on the fold felt like it was painted on the phone which was indeed a very unique and pleasant experience. 
So that's your answer, Tej60. And yes, I've tested the screen mirroring option with Miracast supported TV and also on Dex mode as well. All right, now let's look at the camera specs. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 comes with a total of five cameras, which includes two selfie cameras, where one is at the display cover area and the other is inside of the fold, where the display cover area has a 10 megapixel f2.2 aperture lens. Then the main screen's front camera has also a 10 megapixel f2.2 aperture lens. Then as for the rear camera, there is a 12 megapixel f2.2, 12 mm ultra wide angle lens, a 12 megapixel f1.8 main lens, and a 12 megapixel f2.4 telephoto lens. Now, Pictures on the phone were amazing as Samsung proves over and over again that it's not about the numbers of pixels but the overall quality of the lens and the image processing. Everything from the ultra wide angle shots, the main lens, the portrait mode was just stunning as you guys can see and even during the shots at night which shows that this is indeed flagship materials. And what's nice is that you can use the camera app folded just like this. And since it has a bigger cover display, I tend to use this mode when I take pictures on the fold. Then as for the selfie cameras, you can either use the cover display camera, the camera in the fold, and also the rear camera as well, which was extra cool to get those really high quality selfies using the rear camera. And of course, using the cover display as your viewfinder and since Samsung devices support gestures to take photos, that was an added plus instead of typically reaching out with the other hand to touch the shutter button. And since the phone had a very sturdy hinge, you can now use the phone like a tripod to take photos as though someone else took the photo, which was really neat. Then as for the video's recording resolution and frame rates, it records up to 4K 60 frames per second for the rear cameras, where the video footage on the Fold 2 is hands down the best that I've seen on any smartphone out right now with an amazing image civilization. Then there's also this cool feature called Auto Framing Mode, where the phone camera uses all of its camera focal length and follows the subject, which was super cool as it gave a whole new different level of creating content on your own by yourself. Then as for the front cover display, it records up to 2160 up to 30 frames per second with also excellent image stabilization. Now as for the phone speakers, again, this phone, like the first generation Fold, is hands down the best smartphone speakers that I've ever heard. I know I'm overselling this phone, but it's true. From playing videos, playing games, even listening to music, the audio sounded loud and clear with 92 dBs equipped with Dolby Atmos technology and everything was clear and crisp with no distortion even at its highest volume and here is a quick sound test. Now, as for the phone software, it has Samsung's One UI on top of Android 10. And as someone who loves the One UI, this experience was no different to me. And what I loved about the software experience is the continuity between apps when the phone is folded and unfolded. So I always have the option to choose between the cover display screen with regular task. And then if I want to switch it to a bigger screen, I can go right inside if I want to. Now, this app continuity feature is currently not available for all apps just of yet, but you would think that an app like Instagram would already be on the ball with this, but their app is still not, so get your act together, Instagram. Now, I have to say that the typing experience on the phone was great, as I mentioned earlier, because of its keyboard's layout, which was divided into right and left, which made the typing experience really seamless. And using the phone to read articles online for social media browsing as well was great, with the multi-window mode for multitasking in a whole new level. And since there is the fingerprint sensor at the side, you can also use it as a notification slider. 
which is also a huge plus when using the phone every single day. Now also as a professional host, this fold made writing scripts was great, especially when I was on stage on a rostrum to easily read and adjust the script accordingly with the multi-window mode as I mentioned earlier. And when I'm done on stage, shh, just fold the phone, put it in my pocket instead of me typically carrying a tablet around. Now another huge benefit for me is that usually when I go to the gym, I tend to bring a tablet and also a phone where the tablet is for watching videos when I'm on the treadmill and it's nicer to have a bigger screen instead of typically using your smartphone. So now I have the Fold. Now the Samsung Galaxy Fold comes with a total of 4,500 milliamps of battery where it uses dual batteries where it seems small as a device to power two displays. But based on my test using the phone daily where I use the cover display about 20% of the time and the main screen about 80% of usage, I got an average of 5 hours and 46 minutes of screen on time with the adaptive display brightness turned on and also the adaptive refresh rate up to 120Hz so that is great battery life. Then the phone also comes supported with 25 watt fast charging where the charger comes inside of the box as mentioned earlier. It also has 11 watts of fast wireless charging and wireless power share which would be useful to charge your Galaxy Buds Live which I'm looking to review really soon. Now when it comes to gaming, I love how playing games like Asphalt 9 and PUBG Mobile had a great full screen gaming experience where the graphics were set to HDR and frame rate at Ultra on PUBG Mobile and playing games were extra sweet again because of its really nice speakers on the fold. Alright, in conclusion, we all need to give a huge credit towards Samsung to be one of the very few brands that listens to us users on working on their next iterations based on the feedback given. And using the phone as my daily smartphone has benefited me tremendously for the past two weeks or so. So if you can afford it, you are surely not going to regret it. Now as for the price here in Malaysia, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 is going for 7,999 ringgit and I'll leave links down below for more info on that. And as for your question, Mike Casper, if you ask me whether or not I would personally get this phone, I would say that if the telco companies here in Malaysia had a special package for the Z Fold 2, then I would totally get it in a pinch. But let me know what you guys think of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 down at the comment section below and would you guys get it? Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys found this video helpful in making your purchase decision. And if you did, be sure to give this video one of these. Like, share and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you haven't done so. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll catch you guys in my next video.